tossed aside her blankets, pushed her feet toward the floor, wrapped around herself some clothing, and began to drag her afflicted body to the door. She heard a stranger within the city, a ministry of healing. to the service, perhaps today might be the day that God would stretch forth his finger and touch her in a special way. Well, she sat in the service like she had for 18 years before, but when the stranger stood in the pulpit, he opened up the word and began to declare a word of healing. A word of deliverance, a word that spoke to her in her most needs, her fears, her tears. He spoke to her gender. He spoke to her self-esteem. He spoke to every secret thing she had gone through. He said, woman. of her past, tearing the limitations from her mind. He said a word of deliverance that came to her just in the nick of time. She shocked everyone around her when she stood to her feet that day. And at the voice of him that spoke, she began to walk that way. He leaned over into her ear, and he spoke a word so bright and clear that when she heard it, it delivered her, it transformed her from all of her fears. Now, maybe you face a test. And you say, Lord, I've done my best. I don't know where to go or who to talk to or where my weary soul can find some rest. I'd like to recommend that stranger. He's still speaking words of life today. And if you let him come into your heart by the power of his word, there's still something that the master, the master wants to say. Woman, there's nothing that happened to you that God can't see you through. There's no pain that you bear. There's no fear, no problem you've endured that he can't see you through. So turn up the noise of your mind and tell the devil he's in for a fight. Because in the voice of him that speaks to you, you can walk in the marvelous light. Now take heed to these words. You're loose from your pain and your bondage. You're loose from your struggles and your fears. You're loose from your past, your secret, and all of your tears. Yes, every one of your chains are broken, and at last your soul is free. Now you get ready to stand up straight, get ready to walk in liberty. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. You're beginning to move, to walk, to stretch your limbs. You're moving into liberty. Woman, your past is behind. Jesus died on the cross just to liberate you. Take courage in your hand. Take the word in your heart. Take the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, and 
bring her body to the service, perhaps today might be the day that God would stretch forth his finger and touch her in a special way. Well, she sat in the service like she had for 18 years before. But when the stranger stood in the pulpit, he opened up the word and began to declare a word of healing, a word of deliverance, a word that spoke to her in a most needs, her fears, her tears. He spoke to her gender. He spoke to her self-esteem. He spoke to every secret thing she had gone through. He said, woman, thou art loose. Breaking the chains of her past, tearing the limitations from her mind. He said a word of deliverance that came to her just in the nick of time. She shocked everyone around her when she stood to her feet that day. And at the voice of him that spoke, she began to walk that way. He leaned over into her ear and he spoke a word so bright and clear that when she heard it, it delivered her. It transformed her from all of her fears. Now, maybe well ladies and gentlemen uh, god bless you for staying tuned and tuning into um my take channel uh we are streaming from jefferson road in alberta edmonton canada this is our maiden edition of um, my take channel broadcast. This channel is going to be a channel that um, I believe will be a blessing to humanity. On this channel, we will be discussing everything everything that will add up to you the life of humanity we will touch on it we'll touch on theological issues uh church doctrinal stuff we'll touch on social issues there are a lot to share but it is said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a step and so somehow today we are beginning the program and we trust that the subsequent ones as you tune in will bless your life and somebody's life as you spread the news as you inform others this program actually was born in my spirit about two years ago when the Lord one day said for a lot that I have tutored you I have taught you I have taken you through both life experience ministerial experience and the lord said i want you to share them and so i have been pregnant with this vision of starting this channel where i can share these issues and um, i want to say thank you to samson ayenemi of joy fm um the the the, the name of the channel, my take, is his, his couched word on his program, News Fire. And so I sought permission from him and he said, go ahead. Because I, 
I didn't hear any other thing from the Lord except my take. And he said, you have something to tell the people. And there are people out there who share in the things that you've been through, who are going through the things that you've been through. And they need to hear your story. They need to tell their story. And so on this channel, it will not just be about we talking. It's about we talking and then you also sharing your view, telling your story. And so uh, on some of the occasions, we will allow people to come in through Zoom or uh, Skype or whichever way we will be able to get people on board from United Kingdom, London, to be specific, from Germany, um, from across the globe, from South Africa, from Ghana, and a host of resource persons that will be joining us in the studio. Um, I, you can see the, the place, the, our lightning system is even not the best. Uh, the studio is still under construction and we are trusting God that in the few days to come, everything is going to fall in place, everything will be in shape. But listen, we are blessed. Um, there are professors of theology, there are ministers of God, experienced ministers, ministers of God who are standing by and saying, Alex, we, we are ready to share in this story. It is not just about the topic that we'll be looking at from today and for months to come, but on diverse issues, just as I have said. But I pray that you will not miss any of the sessions. And it's my prayer also that this channel will be a channel that will turn around lives, a channel that will bring hope to the hopeless, a channel that will inspire grace, stir up grace, activate grace and faith, confidence in the lives of people. This afternoon in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and I believe it's in, it's in the evening in Ghana around 6 p.m., in the United Kingdom, I know it's around 7 p.m. and about um, 8 p.m. in Germany, thereabout, in Düsseldorf. And wherever you are watching us from, we want to say thank you so much for tuning in. We want to bless God for your, for your life. We are so grateful for allowing us to come into your home. You know, it. In Canada, in United Kingdom, in in Germany, in the U United States, it's easy to to do this to watch people live on Facebook and watch people streaming live. But I know that in Ghana, it costs a lot to be able to go live or to watch live because. Um, data is expensive. Um, I don't know about my sister. I have uh, um, a, a mate online, uh, Ophelia from the Barbados. Um, I work with her on on the Taylor Seminary Students Association. Whilst I was president, she was the um, she was in charge of chapel. I, I don't know what how it is like to watch stuff on li life on, on Facebook in the Barbados. But in Ghana, it's expensive. And for you to be able to um, commit to this program, I know you are paying the price. And it's my prayer that God will bless you. Tonight, I have with me here a friend and a brother. Um, he's um, the minister in charge of Bread of Life, Assembly of God, here in Edmonton, Alberta. He's actually my landlord. 
and um, I want you to help me welcome Pastor King George Opin. And today we'll be we'll be discussing issues. We'll be talking about issues. We'll be looking at stuff um, together. But your view, as I said, your take, your story, is welcomed anyway. You you can share this. Uh, um, this program as you watch, share, give us your comment. I I had um, a test from a friend in Pakistan um, who said, brother, we are praying with you and we are trusting God that God will use you to be a blessing to uh, your viewers. He, he's watching all the way from Shafai Salab Salaba in Pakistan. And you know what? We covet for your prayer. Your prayer um, will be so much appreciated for this program. Because, man of God, I, I, if it's preaching, we've been preaching for years. But I believe that there are things over the years we've been through. Um, sometimes people think that because you're a pastor, all is well with you, but it, it's not as we think. And so we've been preaching, and it's not going to be preaching, 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 but talking, sharing, and allowing people to share. Except that uh, for, for tonight, I will want to introduce the subject and then we'll have a bit of time to do um some short discussion i'll be out of here but i'll be back on saturday where i hope um uh the the the, the studio would have been in shape a bit and then we will take off from there but man of god you are welcome do you, do you want to say anything to our viewers oh thank you reverend alex i'm so excited and i'm really really waiting for this program because i really believe in my heart that it's going to be a blessing to even myself the family and those that are watching our viewers believe that the topic is so powerful that there is pain everywhere you go out there there is pain you go in the church there is pain in our heart there is pain so we are fortunate to have this topic in this season and we are mm -hmm. trusting god that it will be a blessing to us thank you man of god um i see um, a friend and a brother reverend gideon hackman from the sun city Sunyani in the bronga half region of ghana um my sister zinat uh she's she, she's the one who actually designed uh, the videos we've thrown out there on my story uh, like i said we started in our own way and uh, we hope to uh, put things in their rightful place do things well as we go but i by, by my training i was told that you make use of what you have we can't wait till we have everything we can't wait till everything is perfect so we are taking off anyway I see my sister, Dr. Doreen Obapa Anderson, also watching from Accra. Uh, God bless you. And my own brother, Francis Obin, is also watching from Accra. Thank God for your life. Um, Stephen Minkara, pastor, Fountain Gate Chapel, God bless you for tuning in. My daughter, Adelaide Ajimandia from Sinyani, God bless you. And my brother in Syracuse is also watching from New Jersey in the United States. God bless your heart. Uh, one time associate pastor of mine, Stephen Donko, is also watching from Sunyani. God bless your heart. Oh, Bina, you are also watching. We thank God for your life. And I have back on the line my sister, uh, Reverend Sister Miranda Ophelia, a schoolmate and uh, 
uh, the woman of God I was talking about from the Barbados. Uh, thank you for tuning in. All of these, like my sister Ophelia, all of them will be coming on board uh, to share their stories and to partake in the discussions. Uh, senior servant Prosper James, God bless you. Pastor Ebenezer Nyako and Sir, the Lord bless you. A man of God, can we look into the scriptures oh, a yes. bit tonight? Um, I, I, I am a bit emotional because um, this topic dealing with the power of pain is not one of the folk tales. It's not one of the stories that are told out there. But this is something that is that has been born out of experience, out of life from childhood up to today. I'm still going through it. And I believe that, as I said, there are others out there like you who is also going through something. And you're saying, Pastor Fembo, um, this is the time, like Pastor George said, this is the season. We need to talk about it. We need to discuss it. You know what? People are going through stuff in their marriages. Divorces in the increase all over the place. Even amongst Christians at the workplace, somebody is going through something at the hands of the boss. The, the effect and influence of coronavirus is spinning somebody down there at the hospital and, and somebody is going through something. Somebody is going through something. But pain, agony, affliction, torture, torment, that is the power of something. That is holding you down. That is dealing with you in the negative. And my prayer is that as we share and as we pray, God will reach you and touch you at the point of your need. I pray that the healing power of God, the reviving power of the Spirit of God, the anointing of the Holy Ghost will come upon somebody even as we share. You know what? I want you to know this. We have prayed. We have fasted. We have been believing God for this program. And for you, I believe, I know that God is up to something in your life. The enemy is in trouble as long as this program remains, and that is why, like Paul requested for prayer, that is why I ask that you will continue to pray for us as we build into the life of this program, especially on the topic dealing with the power of pain. And I want you to turn with me your Bible to First Chronicles chapter 4. The verse 9 and 10. First Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 4. The verse 9 and 10. Um, growing up as a Christian, I have read books, different authors. On the prayer of Jabez, I've, I've heard pastors teach on the prayer of Jabez. I've heard many of God preach, many men of God preach from this particular text. I personally preached many times from this text. But um, for a few days that the Lord said, speak and, and look into this topic. There are dimensions. There are many ways God has been leading me into this particular text. But I want to read First Chronicles chapter 4, the verse 9 and 10. The Bible said, And Jabez, I'm reading from the King James Version, And Jabez was more 
honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow for that matter in pain. Verse 10. The Bible said, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grip me. And God granted him that which he requested. May God bless the reading of his word in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Beloved, um, many preachers have been interested in the verse 10 and the fact that um, Jabez had his own issues and he prayed. Really pick this test when we are talking about prayer and talking about turning points in, in, in lives and stuff like that. But tonight, I am not going to be interested much in the verse 10, though we'll be, coming to, we'll, come in, we'll be coming to it later. My interest so much is in the verse 9. And the Bible said, And Jabez was more honorable and than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, because... I bear him with sorrow. I I have been telling uh, the church many times when I preached from this test and said, if I were to be rewriting this particular test, I would have put it this way. And Jabez's mother gave birth to him in pain. And for that matter, he named him Jabez meaning I gave birth to you in pain. In pain. In sorrow. Now I, I studied a bit on the background of Jabez. And it, it's, it's, it's interesting to note that Man of God, like I was discussing with you in the morning when you, you, you came to say hi to me in the room, I, I had, had not read, I had not heard that Jabez, though we've been talking about him and talking about his prayer and the effect of his prayer and the fact that God answers prayer and we need to get in touch and get stuck to God and hold on to our faith and believe him to change our circumstances and the storms of life that pertains or concerns our lives, man of God, I got to know as I studied in the background of Jabez, that Jabez, if you check from the verse 1 of this particular text, Jabez is of the background of the tribe of Judah. That is so amazing. Jabez, we, 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 we've been concentrating on his pain, yes, I'm going to be talking about pain. We've been talking about his pain. We've been concentrating on his prayer and the fact that God answers prayer. And, and But I, I got so excited to get to know that Jabez, apart from the name the mother gave him and all that we'll be looking at very soon, Jabez is of the household of Judah. He is of the root of Jesse, the root of David, the root of Jesus Christ. A man of God, I, I try to, I, I, you know, sometimes I love to, I love to, I love to sound controversial sometimes, you know. I have, I, I know, I know my good friend, uh, uh, Bishop Maxwell Hagan from, um, the Philippines, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, he'll be one of our resource persons. And, and 
This is a man I have known for many, many years growing up together in Sunyami, and God is using him mightily in the in the Philippines, um, in the area of, of, of ministry. And thank you so much for tuning in. Man of God, I know Pastor Eben is watching, and I have had many um, praise and worship leaders, or worship leaders who say, Judah is praise. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. Yes, that, that is one of the meanings of Judah. One of the meanings of, of Judah. That, that, that's okay. But, but listen, as I studied the pain and the declaration and the reason why Jabez was named Jabez and studying of the genealogy of Jabez, the genealogy of David, the genealogy of Jesse, the genealogy of Jesus Christ, man of God, I realized that there was something beyond the praise. Or there is something beyond the praise. Yes. We have most of the time talked about the praise that Judah is praised and left out the witty matter in my view. Yeah. For me, there is a witty matter. There's a witty matter. Now, if you study the tribe Judah, man of God, David is a man the Bible said was after God's own heart. And he was anointed one day to be king over Israel, or he was going to be king over Israel after Saul had been, had been rejected or dethroned by God. After the anointing man of God, I have a sermon or a message I've been preaching. Abdullah, Adulam, not a palace. David has been anointed king or to be king over Israel. And yet, David went through so much at a point he had to even make like a mad person to survive whilst walking into the palace. And I'm talking about one that comes from the tribe of Judah. David. Let's look at Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith, man of God. God who came onto this earth and took the form of humanity, of a human being, walked on the face of this earth, was abused many times. A man of God, there are many people that are going through abuse in life. Yes. He was rejected many times, disrespected many times, and people are going through. Listen, I'm not dealing with just the subject Pain, I'm having a headache. No, that, that, that's not just I'm just what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the real issues of life. People are going through stuff. I am going through stuff myself. I know you are going through something. But Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, he went through stuff himself. The one that was anointed with that measure went through stuff. Pastor Ebe, my good friend and my brother, as we talk about Judah the praise, can we also switch to Judah the sufferer? Judah, the one that has gone through so much pain, and let people know that Christianity is not just about the things we will enjoy. Speaking in tongues, falling under the power, Miraculous healings, breakthroughs, God blessing us with the wife, blessing us with children, blessing us with good job. All these things are good. But listen to me, Christianity, Christianity is, is, is above that, is beyond this. If David, the man after God's own heart, 
could give us Psalm number 123. Sorry, Psalm number 23. And said, Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow. He went through the valley and the shadow. You would think about David who was king. That heavily anointed warrior and you are excited about him. You think that was just about it. He went through stuff. And he said, yet though I walked, I, wa I walked through the valley and the shadow of death. Jesus, we seated at the right hand side of the father. And the Bible said at the mention of his name, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus he is Lord. Before he got to sit at the right hand side of the Father, ladies and gentlemen, he went through stuff. Even the Bible says that God rejected him because of the sins of humanity. He went through stuff. Until we get to that place, that river, where we would drink and not test again until we make it to heaven one day where we will know no pain where we will know no tears i want to announce to somebody that pain sorrow torment will continue to be part of our lives the deception has been that if there's a pastor listening to me this has been the deception this, the, the deception. We have always deceived the church to think that Christianity, Christianity is bread and water and butter. Christianity is not bread and butter. It's not rosy rosy. It's a, it's a difficult journey. It's a difficult life. I pray and as we go through these sessions, God will come through for you so that you'll be able to say with David that ye do I walk through the valley and the shadow of death. I fear no evil because the Lord is with me. May that be your prayer. May that be your story. May that be your testimony in the end in the name of the Lord Jesus. But let, let's not put this another way. Pastors are going through st stuff. They are going through their, their all kinds of pains. Some pastors are being disrespected. Listen, growing up, I, I, I have seen poverty. Growing up, I have seen anger. Growing up, I've seen rejection. Growing up, I've seen, I've experienced the, 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 the place or the time in my life where I've been disrespected and disregarded. I was made to feel I was nobody. In case that is your story, my prayer is that God will give you another story. Amen. I pray that change that story for you. Amen. I pray that God will put a song in your mouth. Amen. But Jabez, who is of the lineage of Judah, and if you look at these key, two key people I've talked about, David and Jesus, they all went through stuff. You are not the first one and not the son to be going through stuff. You are not the first one. You are not the first one. But Jesus told us, he promised, I said, I have overcome. And so you are an overcomer. Yes. You will tell your story one day. One of these days, you will tell your story. The Lord will be honored in your story, I believe. The story about that marriage of yours, your divorce situation, you will tell it. 
Listen, Azafo, one thing I love to be doing this thing in response to, in response to what God is leading me to do is that like in first John 1 1, I believe, the Bible said that which our hands have touched, that which our eyes have seen, those are the things we proclaim. Those are the things we testify. And so this is not just about reading scriptures and tests and talking big uh, uh, jargons and, yeah. and all that, but it's about life experiences. Have you been divorced? You have a story to tell. Have you lost your job? You have a story to tell. Have you suffered and gone through the power of poverty? You have a story to tell. Have you tasted hunger? You have a story to tell. Man of God. What what would you want to add to the few things that I've said? Yes, what I've, whatever that I've said is really true and it's practical. And especially concerning marriage. Mm. Now, divorce rates with Christianity is very high. Mm. All because maybe the man want to have his own way or the woman want to have her own way. And because of that pain, it's happening. It's going through people's heart. It's like sometimes they have taken a spear to just spear through your heart. Mm. Some women, the kind of words that they, 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 it will come out of their mouth. The man will go to bed and he cannot sleep. Mm. So to the woman. And that is what is causing marriages. Mm. But as we go through it, as we deal with the power of pain, we are trusting God that the Spirit of God will minister to those that are causing that pain mm. for them to come to a point of repentance. Mm. Because we can't continue as Christians to go through that. Deal with it. Some of them, yes, we can deal with it. And some of them, we cannot uh, 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 avoid them. But as the Spirit of God help us to go through it, I believe that God will give us the grace to go through the pain that we cannot do nothing about it. And the one that we can handle it, we will do something about it because it has come to a point that Christians need to enjoy even the fullness. What the Bible talks about is that it has come to a point that Christians, we need to enjoy them. Mm. But if we don't do that, mm. We will suffer, we will go through that pain on this earth before mm. we go to heaven. Mm. But we are trusting God that as you lead us mm. to go through this state of, of pain, mm. we will get an eye opening. Mm. Amen. Amen. Now, man of God, you see, um, if you go back to Genesis chapter 49, um, I think from the verse 8 to 12 where Jacob was blessing um his children before his death, he got to Judah and he said, Judah, you will be praised. Yes. And that is why I believe they talk about Judah yes. meaning praise. praise. But I believe that instead of Judah meaning praise, yes. Judah is supposed to mean you will be yes. praised, yes. you will be celebrated. Yes. But listen, the irony the, the, the contradiction is this. Instead of Judah being praised, being celebrated, before the celebration, before the praise, the tribe of Judah, if you study very well, went through stuff, they went through times of battle, they were attacked on every side, until finally the kingdom of Israel was broken into two, and they, 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 they ruled on the southern part. 
my man of God, Jesus, before he was given the name that is above every name, that at the mention of his name, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that he is Lord, he had to go to the cross. Before David was anointed or enthroned finally, I think in, um, is it Second Kings or thereabout, uh, chapter 5? Mm -hmm. Is it the, chapter 5, the verse 17 thereabout, I believe. Yeah. When he was enthroned, David had gone through stuff. I want to let somebody know that the distance between destiny and the fulfillment of destiny has a lot. Yes. It has a lot. The distance between destiny and fulfillment of destiny, the distance between purpose and fulfillment of purpose, the distance between goal and the fulfillment or achievement of that goal entails a lot but i pray as we go through this season of dealing with the power of pain may god empower you may god enable you like pastor george said to be able to handle your pain and breakthrough may god empower you to be able to overcome your pain May God empower you to be able to prevail over your pain and, and put under your food your pain. Your place is to be celebrated. Your place is to be spoken of and talked about. Be a household name. Be a sign and a wonder. Be a miracle in the eyes of humanity. Apostle, man of God, you remember I preached a message recently about yet a little while. Mm, yet a little while. Jesus told them that, look, yet a little while, mm. I'll be leaving you. But mm. the world will mm. laugh at you. The world. Listen, man of God, I believe there is somebody out there who has become a laughing stock yes. in the eyes of society. You 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 look so useless. You become a laughing stock. You become a laughing stock. But I pray that as you listen to us, as you, you yes. go, go with you you travel or journey with us through the sessions of dealing with the power of pain. May God lift up your head from every form of shame, every form of embarrassment, anything that has made you to put your head down. May the one that lifts up our heads, lift up your head in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. As I said, this is just the maiden um, edition of dealing with um, the power of pain, and of course, the maiden broadcast of my take channel. We are on YouTube. It is my take channel. Um, very soon, uh, we are going to flood the place with all kinds of, all kinds of teachings and discussions and everything we do here would be recorded and pushed there or published on YouTube. Uh, hopefully by Saturday, we will we'll be linking you up on Zoom. And so if you would want, to, if you want to uh, join us on Zoom, you can join us there. I, I, whichever way you want to come on Facebook, you want to watch us on Facebook, you want to watch us on YouTube, Hopefully by Saturday, we are going to get all of that linked up. But you know what? Hey, man of God, Edwin, God bless you so much. You know what? I, I have told you 
um, wisdom is not only in one man's head. And I'm not the only one that is going through stuff or have been, been through stuff. I believe that you have something to say. I believe you have a story to tell. I believe also that there is a situation you are going through and you, you, you might be saying, Pastor Frimpo, can you share a word of prayer with me? Can you, can you stand with me in this situation? And so I'll be welcoming your thoughts. I'll be welcoming your prayer request uh, from the time I threw this thing up around last week or last two weeks ago, the flyer up. Um, I have I've spoken to people outside of Edmonton and praying with them, sharing in their story and, and standing with them and encouraging them. That is what this program is all about. You, don't, you know what? I, I, I believe that I, I call myself the someone that has been through stuff and survived. I call myself a survivor. But I believe there is somebody out there who might have survived many things more than I have survived. And we want to hear your story. We want to hear your story. We want to hear your story. Even now, in case you have something you want us to talk about, you have something, some prayer topic or some prayer, you want us to pray with you, we are ready here with you to stand with you and to believe God for your life. Man of God, you have something to, to add? Yes, um, Apostle. Yes. We are trusting God that this program will be a fruitful mm. program. Believe, because the pain that all of us are going through and go through sometimes, it, it, it takes the hand of God. Mm. We have all been through stuff mm -hmm. when we were, we were growing. I mean, when we came, we migrated to this place. We faced pain. We've gone through challenges. So, as you said earlier, wisdom is not in one man's head. Things that you have gone through and you have also gone through, we want to share our, our experience. We want to share our minds together so that the program will be a beneficial to everyone because Jesus came for humanity. Mm. He didn't come for the rich or the poor, but he came for humanity. He mm. said, whosoever. Mm. So we are trusting God that whosoever. Whosoever. That is so key. You know what? Mm. I, I, have, I have a word from... Um, this this gentleman he was an elder in the Fountain Gate Chapel Church in Sunyani. I pastored them, uh, Mr. Adam Agble. He he has sent a message that is for me so so powerful. He said, "May God lead us through our pains without compromising our faith in Christ Jesus." A man of that God. Is that is so important. As we go through. The sessions, one of the things we'll be looking at is that we do not have to compromise our faith. You don't have to lose your guard. We need to, in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the trouble, we'll have to stay focused and hold on to God. And hold on to our faith. God bless you so much, man of God. And and somebody also said, may may, may grace, Reverend Frimpong, may the message God has given you touch and restore lives. This is the heartbeat of this program, so that people's lives, people's hearts, would be restored, and people's faith that are dying and dwindling would be activated. Okay. I can see uh, my my friend and my brother, uh, Reverend Frank Anderson Adu, uh, the senior pastor, head pastor, Fountain Gate Chapel, Cape Coast. Um, also um, on the line, he'll be one of the resource persons, one of the sessions 
Oh, I can't wait for the rest of the sessions. This this program, I believe, is blessed with resource persons that every viewer, everybody who participates will be a blessing. Will be a blessing. Man of God, your your last word. We are praying. Before you go, somebody Heaven. says, God bless you, Daddy. Nanajwa, I understand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But listen, don't forget, I need your story. Tell your story. I want to hear your story. You can send me an inbox message. Tell me your story. I want to hear. And then uh, by, by, by Saturday, we'll, we'll give the Zoom account out. And then, um, as I said, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, my take channel. And I believe that the channel will be a blessing to you. Yes, sir. We are talking about pain. Mm. Pastors are going through pain. Mm. And members of the church... Dagadaba. Also are going through pain. Like Husbands are going through pain. Mm. Wives are going through going pain. Through pain. Parents mm. are going through pain. Mm. And children mm. also are going through pain. Mm. Friends, families mm. are going through pain. Mm. So let's all pray for one another. Mm. And whatever the experience that we have. We'll bring them together mm. for us to able to hold one another. Mm. Because the Bible says that we should bear each one another's burden mm. and so fulfill the law of Christ. Mm. The law so, of Christ. Yeah. so as we bear each one as up through our pain, mm. we are fulfilling his law. Amen. 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 Now, God bless you so much, uh, beloved. Um, Listen, there is somebody out there that is in pain because he or she lost a dear one. You lost a father, you lost a mother, you lost a husband, you lost a wife, you lost a son, you lost a daughter. You lost somebody so dear to your heart. I pray that in the season of dealing with the power of pain, may God restore your heart. Amen. May God heal the bruise in your heart as a result of the disappointment that you have been through all these years. Man of God, you know, I, I can see you have been drifting this thing in or tilting this thing in the to the area of marriage. I know that is that is your area. And that is what I'm excited about. I will have uh, some of my professors are ready to come on board and come and speak on issues. And so we'll get one of them here one day. He will not be talking the way. He will come and deal with pain from the theological point of view. And that will be a blessing. And then we have somebody like you who is, who is, who is vested so much in the area of uh, of marriage. marriage issues, Bishop Melvin Landing of London in the United <laughs> Kingdom is also a marriage counselor. Uh, my friend Akwesi Azam of Trinity Baptist in London is also ready to come on board. I mean, all kinds, all kinds, all kinds of resource persons are going to be here. And I believe that um, our lives are never going to be the same. But hey, man of God, there are a lot to share. Oh yeah. I am ready. I am ready to pour out. Listen, pastors are not ready to talk about divorce. We'll talk about it. The misbehaviors on the pulpit. Pastors misbehavior. We will talk about it. There's misbehavior of subordinates. We will talk about it. The mis you know, there are subordinates that are causing so much pain to the hearts of yes. their superiors. And there are superiors that are causing pain to the hearts of their subordinates. And there are colleagues that are heckling, is it heckling each other? 
and causing pain to one another. Who we'll talk about everything. May God grant us grace. Yes. May God give us wisdom. May he anoint our hearts and our lips to declare his mind, to share of his wisdom, to share in his wisdom, and to share in his knowledge. May God bless you. Thank you so much, man of God, again, uh, Reverend Frank Anderson, for staying through. Um, my sister and mom, Auntie Teresa Diewo from Germany, you are also watching us. This is a great woman of God. He, she, she and the husband are like, the husband is like a senior brother and an uncle. That's and great. this is a mom and a sister in Germany. Anytime I'm in Düsseldorf, they make me feel good. In fact, it's in Germany. I eat one of my favorite um, dish. We'll talk about that later. Um, I can see my friend and brother, Pastor Frederick Asiedu, also watching from Accra. God bless you. And then Ivan, Ivan Boachi from Germany. God bless you also. Um, I know you are also into this. Of course, this is, Ivan is one of the sons. By the grace of God we raised. But he's doing the same thing in Germany. And you see, man of God, the reason why I, I got excited about John, 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. You see, we, 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 we've done things. We've read stuff. I have studied by the grace of God. I have, <laughs> I have I just completed my second master's in theological studies, Master of Divinity. After studying all these things, is it just about the 40, 45 minutes preaching in church? No. no. We are supposed to be a blessing to humanity, a blessing to the to the world out there and to shape up. So Ivan is one of the gentlemen that grew out of our ministry. And he's doing so powerful in, in, in Germany. And then I remember Pastor Edwin Hoover. He will ask me all the questions. And my thank God he's, he's, he's in the ministry as well now. Um, I want to say thank you finally. We hope to come your way again Saturday. 12 noon mountain time. That is our better Edmonton time. And then um, 18 hours GMT in Ghana and 19 hours GMT in London. And then 20 hours uh, GMT in Germany, specifically Düsseldorf and in Holland and all over those places. Make time, make a date with us next week. But before we go, I want to share a word of prayer with you. I want to share a word of prayer with you. I want to share a word of prayer with you. Uh, my prayer and my desire is that God will lose you. God will empower you. God will touch your life and cause you to be victorious over your pain, over your torment over your torture, over the thing that is eating you up. And I pray right now for you. May that anointing come upon you. May that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse the power of that pain. I curse that hold to break off your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I ask that the grace, the grace of God, even the one that is above all things, a greater grace come upon you and may his peace that passes all understanding come upon your life. You have been enabled to go through your pain and prevail. You've been enabled tonight to rise again in the name of Jesus. and walk 
You've been enabled tonight to see your pain and know of his power so you can come against it and overcome it. You are more than a conqueror. Nay, if Christ be for us, who can be against us? So, so, okay. We are more than conquerors. Yes, Lord. yes. Be delivered. Yes. Be healed of your pain. May that sickness lose its hold over your life. In the name of Jesus. May the healing anointing of God come upon you. May a miracle happen to your life tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Until we meet again on Saturday. I want to say shalom. Shalom. God bless you. Amen. God bless Bye. You. God bless you. And he spoke a word so bright and clear that when she heard it, it delivered her. It transformed her.